Hello everyone, I'm Chi Zheng Yang, field application scientist here with MGI. Thank you for watching WebDepad series again. In this video, we will discuss the DNBSIC G50 together. DNBSIC G50 is a compact and flexible benchtop size genetic sequencer. It can produce around 100 million or 500 million rays with two different types of flow cells the FCS and FCL with three or four ray length options for both flow cells the DNB sig G50 might be your best choice for some applications like low pass whole genome sequencing targeted sequencing small whole genome sequencing RNA sequencing or whole exon sequencing and so on of course the DNB sig G50 is also using our unique sequencing technology, the DMB6 sequencing technology, which can bring you more accurate data, decreased duplication rate, and reduced index hoping possibility. We are not going to talk with all of those technical specifications today, but we are going to use these instruments together and see what we need to pay attention to in the process of using it. Before we begin, please read the user menu of DMB G50 carefully. The whole workflow of DMB G50 can also be divided into four steps DMB generation, DMB loading, sequencing run setup, and device maintenance. Some of those parts are the same as our previous video for DMB G400. So, we won't repeat the details here. If necessary, please watch the G50 videos along with the section of G400 videos. Of course, we will remind you in the videos as well. Firstly, we have to get familiar with our high throughput sequencing set. Here is a P100 sequencing set. It contains two boxes. One is the sequencing flow cell and the other is sequencing cartridge with some leaded reagent tubes. The cartridge has to be stored at minus 20 degrees C. For thawing, we could place that in a room temperature water bath or store it at 4 degrees C one day before. The reagents for DMB generation here are the low TE buffer, make DMB buffer, make DMB enzyme mix, and make DMB enzyme mix 2 LC and also the stop DMB reaction buffer. Except make DMB enzyme mix 2 LC, we could take all of the others out and throw them in advance. Because make DMB enzyme mix 2 LC is quite sensitive to the temperature, we'd better to take it prior to use. So now we can start the DMB generation. Here, we'd better to watch the first episode of DMB SIG G400 videos. The same thing we are going to do with G50 as well. At the beginning, we have to calculate the input volume of the single strand circular DNA library based on the library QC, and then perform the primer annealing step and start the RCA reaction. Afterwards, we need to stop the reaction immediately and then mix them with wide board pipette tapes. After mixing, the DNA nanoball is then generated. The concentration of that DNA nanoball has to be determined by using qubit and qubit SSDNA assay kit, and the concentration should be over 8 nanogram per microliter. After DMB is generated, we have to prepare a fresh DMB loading mixture for sequencing. Take out three reagents, the DMB load buffer 1, DMB load buffer 2, and make DMB enzyme mix 2 LC. After throwing the DMB load buffer 1 and DMB load buffer 2, vortex them and short spin, take the 0.5 ml microfuge tube from the sequencing kit, and then Add 50 microliter of DMB load buffer 1 and 50 microliter of DMB load buffer 2 
and one micronutrient make DMB enzyme mix to LC respectively. Then use whiteboard tapes to transfer 100 microliter well prepared DNA nano ball to the tube and then use the same whiteboard tapes to mix the mixture 5 to 8 times. Again, job by job, don't vortex, centrifuge or shake the tube. Then we can place your loading mixture at 4 degrees C and now we can move to the sequencing cartridge preparation. Once the sequencing cartridge is thawed, invert the complete cartridge three times before use. Make sure that no visible layers can be seen in the cartridge, especially for the well number 17 and number 18. Open the cartridge cover and wipe the condensed water with dust-free paper. Clean all of the sealing surface with 75% alcohol. Besides that, we have to take out the following reagents, DNTP mix 3 and DNTP mix 2 and the sequencing enzyme mix. The sequencing enzyme mix should be placed on the ice box. After thawing the two DNTPs, vortex them and short spin, and we are ready to add those reagents into the sequencing cartridge. Use 1 ml pipette tip to pierce a hole at the edge of the well number 1 and well number 2. Add 0 0.74 ml DNTP mix 3 to well number 1 and 1.48 ml DNTP mix 2 to well number 2. After that, add 0 0.74 ml sequencing enzyme mix into well number 1 and 0 0.74 ml sequencing enzyme mix to well number 2. Please remember here, every time you add reagents into the cartridge, you have to use a fresh pipette tip. After that, seal the hose with a transparent sticker, place the cartridge on the table, hold the cartridge and shake it clockwise 10 to 20 times and then counterclockwise 10 to 20 times until all the wells are fully mixed. Since it's PE sequencing, we need to add another MDA enzyme and MDA reagent to well number 15. Don't forget to vortex and spin it, then transfer 200 microliter of MDA enzyme mix to MDA reagent tube, invert the complete tube several times, of course, we have to pierce a hole of well number 15 as well, and then add all of those MDA mixture to well number 15. Now, we can close the cartridge cover and bring it with the DNB loading mixture to the sequencer. Before we start the sequencing run, first, the sequencer has to be done with the full wash process Secondly, the sequencer has to be restarted right after the wash process is completed. Thirdly, we have to confirm that the storage inside the sequencer is sufficient for your next run. Log in the user interface with the account user and password 123. Click the sequence button and now you can enter your DMB ID into it. You need to open the reagent compartment door and place your loading mixture right under the needle. If there is still cleaning reagent tube inside, please remove them first. Select the barcode ID and the sequencing recipe according to your high throughput sequencing set. Of course, there are more options available under the customized button. Click here, you can choose the sequencing start phase from DMB loading, post loading, sequencing prime, or sequencing. Still, if you have prepared the samples with dual barcode, you could also type in your dual barcode lens. Or select if a demultiplexing is needed or not, 
or if you lead a dark reaction or not. Here, we just simply select P100. Then click Next. Now, we need to type in your sequencing cartridge ID and place your prepared sequencing cartridge in the refrigerator. Please be careful with the direction of the cartridge. Simply slide the cartridge into the compartment and then close the door. Back to the software interface. Click Next. Now we need to type in your flow cell code. We could manually enter or use a scanner to do this. Then open the flow cell compartment door. We'd better to clean the stage of the flow cell first using 75% alcohol with dust-free paper to wipe the stage or then use the dust remover to remove the dust on the stage. After that, open the flow cell box. Check the condition of the flow cell. There are two locating pins at the left side of the flow cell and one locating pin at the right side. Hold the flow cell by edges. Press the attachment button. Align the flow cell with the locating pins on the flow cell stage. Press the left and right side of the flow cell with both hands at the same time. Make sure it is properly seated on the stage. After that, we could check the vacuum pressure, look down inside in the direction as shown here. The pressure should be between minus 80 to minus 99 kilopascal. And then close the compartment door. Connect next on the software interface. Review all the parameters that you have entered. If everything is fine, now we can start to perform the sequencing. Once the sequencing is started, we would better to check the fluidic system again. Open the flow cell compartment door again. Observe the lens for another 1 to 2 mimics, and you will see the prepared loading mixture will be aspirated into the flow cell. The liquid should cover the entire flow cell evenly, and there should be no bubbles created. If so, it means the whole loading process is normal. Now, we can use dust remover to remove the dust from the flow cell surface and close the compartment door. Here, we need to know the sequencer has just completed the loading part. It will take another 30 minutes for incubation until it changes to the next phase, post-loading. Now, there is nothing else we need to do. After around 2 hours, we can see the first base report and the total PE100 sequencing run takes approximately over 45 hours. Once the sequencing is completed, we have to perform the sequencer maintenance. The same in the procedure here with DMBSIG G400. You could also watch the fourth episode of DMBSIG G400 videos as well. Here, we will use the empty cartridge as different cleaning cartridges which are filled with sodium hydroxide to wing or minicule water. Then perform three times maintenance wash plus one regular wash. All the details, you can find them in the DMB G400 videos and the only differences here are in the filling volume in each separate cleaning cartridges. Okay, so that's all about the sequencing workflow of DMB Sig G50. For more related videos, please subscribe our official YouTube channel MGI International. Or if you have any further technical questions, please feel free to send your emails to mgiinfo@genomics.cn. Our FS team will be very happy to help you.
Thank you. See you next time.